Welcome back, Zero K fans. This is Shadow Three 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 with another exhibition match. This time it's Aquanim versus Kane on Kaleo. Not much more to be said here. Both players are pretty well known, pretty good. So let's just get started. Oh, Kane is over the northeast side of the map, going for Clickbot Factory right away. While Aquanim, the southeast side of the map, going for a Hovercraft, which is not terribly surprising. We saw Hovercraft, I think, from was it Aquanim again? I think last last time I casted Kaleo, we saw Hovercraft. And I think it might have been Aquanim. Yeah, it was Aquanim versus Google Frog. And that was... Well, almost successful for Aquanim at the time. And Kane is much more on par with that. I mean, Aquanim almost won against Google Frog using this. And Kane being on par at least by elo value. Aquanim, I think, is fairly confident here. They probably have a good grasp of what they need to do. And they've probably thinking, okay, well, I was almost able to win against Google Frog against someone who's at my skill level, at least in terms of the numbers. I should be fine. I should win here. I should be okay. And Kane, on the other hand, not sure if they're thinking about that. Not sure if they're considering Aquanim's game against Google Frog from before. They might be. They might just be thinking about the fact that Aquanim does seem to enjoy using Hovercraft on this map. And Aquanim very quickly upgrading to Light Particle Beam and their commander, while at the same time Kane has upgraded. What have they upgraded to? Beam Laser. Fairly standard opening Sporecom upgrades. Nothing too out of the ordinary there. Although Aquanim did lose, just lose their radar. Bit of a loss, but not a huge deal. It can be rebuilt pretty easily. So Kane setting up over to the south. Quick, pretty quickly going to the south, while at the same time Aquanim building with the main base, rebuilding radar. Surprisingly, Aquanim, neither player, I don't think. No, neither player is going for early engineers. Sorry, never mind. Kane is going for an early one. Aquanim, I don't see anything. No, Aquanim now going for a quill, but it took a little while to get there. And Aquidim trying to deal with these glaives. Not the best position. These daggers are going to be very, very much punished for this. One of them got dies immediately. The other one has to run away. The glaives regroup to deal with it and lose sight of it. Just barely, but they do lose sight of it. While well, Aquidim, on the other hand, getting a mace, going to the south. The glaives protecting where they think the dagger came from. I mean, right now, you know, they do kind of know where... It, yeah, it's in radar, that's why. So they kind of know where it is. Aquanim, on the other hand, has their mace over to the south side. Not the best position, though at the same time, Kane's commander is kind of undefended. A mace over here... Okay, a couple maces down here would kill the commander right off. That would be it. That commander would be dead. And at this stage in the game, that is a huge deal. Not sure if Aquanim is going to go for it, though. Aquanim is moving their mace forward, but it looks like it's purely for defensive purposes. I don't see any offensive intention in this mace right now. I do ever see some offensive intention in Kane's Glaives. They're kind of pushing forward for the purposes of defense as well, but you don't use Glaives for defense in the same way you use Maces, you use Riots in general. Glaives are Raiders. I mean, Kane's probably very confident in their micromanagement skill. They probably will be able to use Raiders fine for defense, but that's the thing. You kind of need to micro them. And Kane definitely raiding over to the south. These, these Glaives are moving into raid, and over to the north, they are double checking, making sure Aquanim has not built over there, keeping the Aquanim honest, and that is indeed the case. Aquanim has not built over to the northeast side of the map yet. Their commander is moving over there while they do have a quill going to the southwest, and similarly, Kane is moving to the east with a conjurer and south with their commander. So it's pretty much symmetric. Though Kane is ahead, Kane is actually moving through this faster than Aquanim is. Aquanim is spending a bit more time building up defenses, building up power generators, building up radar as well. They haven't spent as much time, and more time building up radar too. Like, Aquanim right now has radar coverage of most of the map. As you can see, all is blue. That's all radar. While Kane, on the other hand, has radar coverage of part of the map. South part of the map. Making sure the commander doesn't get hit by anything, but not to the north part of the map. That's all line of sight. You know, the more I use this, the more I actually do kind of like the area-based radar over the outline-based radar. It's a little bit disconcerting to have this blue tinge over the terrain. But at the same time, it makes it very clear where the radar is and isn't. Or at least in theory, it's not really showing up on the lava. But yes, it does show you where the radar is and isn't everywhere. Because radar is blocked by terrain. Radar follows line of sight rules. It's blocked by terrain. It's blocked by... Well, that's really it, actually. But yes, that's a big deal. Not in this map, mind you. This map is very flat. This map doesn't really make that come up. And Scalpel going very much out of position. It manages to get rid of a half-built mechs, but that was a waste of a Scalpel. And the Mace is out of position as well to deal with this Raiders. Sorry, not Raiders. 
Rocco is coming down to deal with the mace. Perfect counter for that. And Kane is reading the situation very well. Switched over to pretty much pure Rocco Warrior. The Glaives having been almost exhausted. Going to the north and being exhausted and taken out by the Halberd to an extent. And it looks like by the Commander as well. Yeah, those Glaives didn't do too well, but frankly it doesn't matter. The Mace here... While dangerous to Glaives... Is there anything? No, it looks like... Yeah, it was just the Commander took them all out. The Mace, while dangerous to Glaives, is not really that big of a deal. For the Rockos, that is. For the Rockos, it's... They counter it directly. And the Halberd does manage to get rid of yet another Glaive. But yeah, like I said, Halberds not going to work well here. Rather, Maces, I said, aren't going to work well here. Halberds as well. More Maces are, however, being constructed. And Aquinim is starting to fall behind. Or, yeah, starting to fall behind. It's it's fairly even. But this force here, those Rockos and Warriors are... They are looking... They are fixing to kill this commander pretty quick. They're going to get rid of the Lotus is no problem. And the commander is going to follow soon after if they're not careful. And the Warrior Rocco mix means the daggers can't get in because of the Warriors. And a mace is, well, kind of a waste. Scalpels wouldn't be a bad idea. Scalpels would actually do really well, but unfortunately the only scalpel that Aquinum has built so... Sorry, that... Yeah, Aquinum has built so far. I don't know why I'm apologizing, why I made the mistake. Is dead. That scalpel died to the glaives. Got totally thrown out of position and wasn't able to recover from that at all. Although over to the southwest, it looks like Kane has pulled back a bit. And Aquinum's going to be able to take the southwest corner... And the northeast corner, if Aquinum holds this, this is the important thing. This attack here, if Aquinum holds this, they can take the northeast corner with impunity. And there are contrasts as well from Kane going over to the northeast, but if Aquinum takes it, that will be a big deal. However, it looks like Kane not even worried about stopping the expansion, going straight to the main base, and they are confident they're going to take this out. Scalpels are being built to counter this. The right choice, but only one of them has been built. Kane is pulling back, however, not totally confident they can deal with that scalpel. And they are not entirely wrong. But at the same time, the scalpel is only... There's only one scalpel. There will be two very shortly in a couple seconds. But even then, with a direct assault, Kane would have been able to get rid of the scalpel without too much issue. The reload time is very high. The warriors will be able to just march right in. And at this point, Aquinum's forces are cornered. I mean, they're in a corner, as you can see, very clearly. And that means that just pushing the forces in would allow Kane to have a lot of damage dealt. However, Kane did not go for that, lost their entire army instead, and Aquinum is going to have free reign on the rest of the map. And at this point, I think Kane is... Well, this is an uphill battle from here. I wouldn't say Kane's lost, but it's definitely become a lot harder for Kane to manage to deal with this. Aquinum is in a far better position. And Aquinum has most of the map. They defended against a fairly large army that came in, and now let's reclaim fuel. I mean, how much reclaim is there here? I would need to... Okay, where's a, where's a quill? There's a quill. Okay, there is 750 metal worth of reclaim right here. That's a couple maces. Or the scalpels that were lost. That's that's the units that were lost and then some for a lot of this game. And another attack force coming into the southwest from Kane. I should point out, Aquinum has not actually been building up any caretakers at their main base, nor have they been building a lot of quills, and this is going to be a problem. This is a very, very common mistake, one I make all the time, where you forget to transition in the mid-game once you get plus 20 or higher. It's the plus 20 hurdle. That's the biggest one. Once you get to plus 30, plus 40, usually by that point you've remembered or you overbuilt caretakers when you're trying to compensate for being plus 20 and only having minus 10 spending. But yeah, that plus 20 hurdle. That is... Being able to handle that well is a sign of a great player. Like somebody's able to handle it consistently well every time they get to the plus 20 hurdle and they have the resources to do that and they have gotten the characters in advance, gotten the quills in advance, and they do that every game, that's when you know there's a player that's paying very close attention to their economy. So Aquinum does have the caretaker. They are setting it up. Kane, however, already had that set up before, and they never were literally worrying about that. And if they get plus 20, though they have been plus 15 for most of the game, but should they get plus 20, they will be able to handle that no problem. So they have a caretaker set up, so they are well set up. Kane definitely managing that fairly well. Just not in the best position for their economy to grow. Aquinum consolidating in the northeast, like really defending the northeast, making a lot of defensive nests here, making it difficult for Kane to deal with that. A couple of hammers wouldn't be, oh, like I said, a couple of hammers wouldn't be misplaced. So they are actually going to the south, which is misplacing them. Over to the north, they'd be far more useful getting rid of the defenders directly. 
Over to the south, there are a couple defenders, but frankly, that would be easily dealt with with units that have been it, that have been deployed so far to the southwest. They wouldn't have a problem dealing with the defenders. Right now, the defenders are mainly weakening them more than anything, but the scalpels. This is where a switch to glaives would be ideal. And Kane knows that. Kane actually switching over to, right as I say that. This is a replay, by the way. It's not like Kane is stream sniping or anything. It's but yeah, that was exactly what Kane should do, is build the glaives. And that's exactly what Kane is doing, is building glaives. Very basic, easy thing to do there, and Kane is doing exactly that. Very much the right thing. And Aquidim, however, does still have the mace, so building glaives is risky. It helps get rid of the scalpel, but the mace is still a problem. Like, once all 30 of these glaives are built, if they're sent out to deal with this problem here, they will deal with it. It'll not be a problem, the maces will not pose much of a threat. At least, not quickly enough that the scalpels will live. Now over to the north, that's where the hammers should have been deployed. The hammers have indeed died. Yep, yeah, there's a hammer corpse. That's a little embarrassing. Is this another? Yeah, it's another the other hammer corpse. So both hammers are dead. Died with scalpels, and that was a waste because those hammers have been very useful to just break this northeast side of the map. But they are not alive anymore. They are very much dead. They are wrecks on the ground, being driven over by a bunch of hovercrafts controlled by Aquinum, who incidentally hasn't really changed with the strategy much recently. They have gotten their caretaker. They are still accessing, however, because of the fact that they are at plus 25. And even though they're building around the map, their commander's not doing anything. Probably the commander could actually build a caretaker and build it from there. Kane does not have radar of the northeast at all. No knowledge of what's going on. Aquinum, on the other hand, only line of sight to the northeast, but still knows pretty much what's going on around the map, except in Kane's base directly. So Aquinum could build a hidden base here and get away with it. But Aquinum not really paying attention. The commander has been idle for about two or three minutes now. A little bit unfortunate there. Aquinum is going for the factory switch for air. Don't know if I totally agree with this. I can see where he'd be doing this for napalm bombs, but it might be a little bit late. The glaives are going to move in. They're actually moving straight past all these forces here. Not even going to try to engage with them quite yet. Going to try to deal with the maces maybe if they have to, but preferably not. These guys are going to deal with this mace and we'll be able to get rid of it, losing probably about half a dozen of their number in the process and a little less than that. They managed to work out pretty well there. Scalpel, however, that's going to be tricky because splash damage is a pain in the butt. This is where glaives, they, unfortunately Kane is point moving and needs to be line moving or doing this sort of like, these sort of really elaborate arrangements because that, that was a painful scalpel missile to watch. Yeah, Kane just throws in the towel right there, losing all their glaives. That was... I'm sorry, that was not necessary. That was a line move. Like, that was a loss by point move. A line move would have won it. It would have killed that scalpel, like two of the glaives would have died, the rest would have killed the scalpel, would have gone through the rest of the base, tearing everything apart. The Stardust and the Mace would have been a problem, but they could have, with some clever micromanagement positioning, gone behind the metal extractors here, behind the solar collectors, dealt with all this, the Stardust would have dealt some damage, and a few of them might have been able to go up and kill it. It's considerably harder to deal with than the maces, but it's it's still something you can deal with by surrounding it on all sides. And then from there, kill the factory. I mean, they, this base would have been very vulnerable. But unfortunately, because they were point moved and not line moved, the scalpel managed to get them all with splash damage, and that gave Akonim the game. Yes, important lesson there is point move is an invitation for death, especially with large cheap large groups of cheap units that die to splash damage quickly. The other lesson from before is don't march units into death either. Also, scalpels have a very long reload time, so if you do see them firing, if there's only one scalpel firing, bum rush it. Just charge. Just go and kill it because it cannot shoot at you for another 10 seconds. That's the only thing left defending. Just destroy it. Game over. It's done. Unfortunately, we did not see that. For, for Unfortunately for Kane, we didn't see that. That's still a good lesson to learn. So that is it for me tonight. Hope you enjoyed that, and thank you all for watching.